We're going to be in Hebrews, Hebrews today, the epistle to the church that was made up of Jewish Christians that the Hebrews, this epistle was written to them. And some people want to know who the human author is, but really the human author is not the point. It is the divine author, author of the Holy Spirit that speaks to us from the pages of the epistle to the Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, we read, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he, that is Jesus, is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke to love and to do good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the habit of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So the early church, we see there were some within it who had a habit of not assembling with other members of the church. Yet the writer of Hebrews, the divine author of the Holy Spirit, is telling us it is very important for Christians to come together that we might exhort one another. That is, that we might give admonitions to one another. And all of this takes place within the assembly of the local church. Now in the first century, the early Christians gathered together as often as they were able. It was an important aspect of their lives. They understood, maybe as no other Christians throughout history, how important it is for Christians to come together. They understood that when we gather together as a local assembly, as a congregation, they understood that there something miraculous takes place. That is, in the coming together of the body of Christ, something supernatural takes place wherever Christians are gathered. That is, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, makes himself manifest in a unique way. And he does this whenever Christians come together. Now, naturally, he will touch us in unique ways. And in various times in our individual prayer, in our individual worship, in our individual study. But yet it is when the body of Christ comes together that he makes himself manifest in a unique way. As in no other time is when the church assembles together. However, we see from Hebrews that there were some who had made it a habit of not coming together. And we do come together, just as the writer of Hebrews says, and let us consider one another to provoke to love and to do good works. That we come together and we share our lives, admonishing one another and spurring each other on in the Christian life, giving admonition and encouragement. You see, unfortunately, there were some who made it part of their routine not to be there. You see, but when we come together, the Holy Spirit can minister to us in a unique way. He works through those around us to touch our lives, to give us comfort, to give us encouragement, to give us support, to touch us in a unique way. An example of our need to be a part of a community of worship is found in what may first appear a completely unrelated incident an occurrence in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is after Jesus Christ has gone into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. The very next day as he makes his way back into the city, we read in Matthew 21, verse 18 and 19, it says, Now in the morning he, that is Jesus, entered into the city, that is Jerusalem, and he was hungry. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it, and he found nothing thereon. That is, there was no fruit, but only leaves. And he said to it, let no fruit grow on you from this time forward. And presently the fig tree withered away. Now some wonder, what does Jesus Christ, inspecting the fig tree outside of Jerusalem on his way in, what does this have to do with Christians coming together in a local assembly? Remember, Jesus comes to this tree and he expects to find fruit. But instead of finding good figs, all he finds is leaves. Now an interesting thing is this. A fig tree can only bear fruit when it is planted with other fig trees. 
A fig tree cannot bear fruit on its own. You see, this is a lesson for Christians. On our own, we cannot bear the fruit. And nor do we help others bear fruit. You see, that lone fig tree can only bear fruit because of the trees around it. They help that tree bear fruit, and it helps other trees bear fruit. That speaks to us about our need to be a part of a local assembly. That means that when we're a part of a local assembly, when we're not out there planted alone, but when we are planted together in the grove of the local assembly, we help each other be fruitful. You see, Jesus inspected that tree looking for fruit and found none, only leaves. That means it just sustained itself. You see, a Christian who isn't part of a local assembly is like that individual who's out there just for their own self. They'll never bear the fruit they were intended to bear. They, like that truth, may, tree, may find their spiritual life withered, unproductive, unfruitful. But in a local assembly, there is the help from those around them to be fruitful and to help others to be fruitful. Another reason why Christians need to gather is that Christians, when we come together, gain perspective. Whenever we look out at the world and we see all those things that are taking place, we see all the strife, all the hardship, we see the injustice in the world around us. Everywhere you look, you see injustice. We see the wicked prosper. We see those that have no restraint gaining whatever they desire. We see that in our life, we Christians, we struggle on a day-by-day -day basis. You see, the psalmist Asfa, he recognized these same things. He said, in Psalm 73, he said, but as for me, as he looked out at the injustice of the world, the disparity between those who have and those who have not, when he saw how in his life, as he tried to do the right thing, as he tried to obey the great God, he had daily struggles and problems and trials, yet he saw those who lived without restraint seem to prosper, to have everything they ever wanted or needed. They didn't have the problems that he did. And he writes about it in Psalm 73. He says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. In other words, he was looking out at all of those around him and the way they lived their life, and yet they seemed to gather wealth. They seemed to gather power. They didn't have the problems that he had, and he was becoming frustrated. He was becoming to the point where he says, I almost slipped. I almost lost my footing. He continues to say as he looks out at the world, he says, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and they are strong. They are free from the common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. You see, the wicked seem to prosper and go through life and have no difficulties or problems. All of these things that Asper looked out, and as we ourselves can look out at the world, all these things perplexed him until he entered the sanctuary of God. It is until he entered into worship, until he gathered with other believers there in the temple of Jerusalem, when he entered into the sanctuary and he heard the word of God expounded, the word of God read, and there was worship. And it was when he entered that sanctuary that he gained understanding and perspective. He wrote, all the day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would, I would have betrayed my own children. When I tried to understand all this thing, it just troubled me deeply. That is what he saw in the world until, all these things troubled him until I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. You see, he recognizes that those things out in the world, they may seem good, but what the end of it will be. It was when he entered into worship, into the sanctuary, that he gained understanding and perspective. We also see in the early church, 
the need for Christians to assemble together. In 1 Peter 2, verse 25, referring to Christians as living stones, as living stones, a reference to the temple of God at Jerusalem. And that temple of God at Jerusalem that had been built had been quarried from many different locations. And the stones were brought and brought to the construction site. Peter writes, you, speaking of Christians, you also, as living stones, are built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see, the stones used to build the temple in those days, they were taken from the place where they were quarried. There in the quarry, they'd be cut into their general shape. But it was when they brought them to the construction site that the real process of shaping those stones really took place. And the way that was done was by forcing them, grinding them into place along with the other stones that were already there. That is, by fitting them, by forcing them into place, the rough edges were knocked off. You see, they didn't go through a process of sanding them. They put them into place, and the grinding process of fitting them into the structure smoothed them. See, for Christians, for Christians, when we come to believe, we find ourselves in the general shape. But it is when we are brought into the construction site of the local assembly that all the rough edges are knocked off. All the rough edges are smoothed out as we are fitted in to the local assembly. You see, God has a place for all of us. He has an intent and a purpose for which we were quarried. That we were brought to the construction site. He has a place for all of us in the temple of God. That is, within the church, within the body of Christ. And as we rub up against each other during times of fellowship, times of worship, times of interaction, the rough edges are smoothed out. You see, a Christian out on his own can never have those rough edges smoothed away. See, it's within the community of the church that the rough edges are fouled down as we are fitted in with one another, as we relate to one another. We begin to fit properly. You see, God has a place for every one of us, an intention. Every stone that was quarried at the building of the temple, every stone had a specific place it belonged. There were no generic stones in the way that we may think of it. Each one had a specific place it was intended to be. Same is true for all of us. God brings us into the body of Christ to fit in a particular place for a particular purpose, wherever that might be. And that process of fitting us for that place is within the local assembly. We help each other to smooth out the rough edges, to knock off those things that may still be rough. It is a process of maturity, of growing in maturity. This cannot take place outside of the community of a local church. A lone Christian never can truly or fully mature, nor truly ever serve the purpose that God has quarried them or called them to be. And unfortunately, just as the writer of Hebrews says, some has made it their habit not to be assembling together. That means they're out there being unrefined. The rough edges are still on them. They're not being refined and they're not being shaped for the purpose that God has called them. And they never can be outside of a local assembly. So often, so often when pastors encourage people to come to church, so often people think it's because we're concerned about either a head count or, or finances. But the truth is we know that when we come together, 
It is here in the midst of the